Hey guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog, and today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Tunzi 8831 Refugium Light. Now, if it's your first time here, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's take a look. The first thing that strikes you about the Tunzi is that it's a totally different form factor to any other Fuge Light. It's a foot long and not much fatter than your thumb, which means it fits out of the way nicely in your sump. It comes with a bracket that holds the light in one of two ways, and the holder is magnetic and will hold firm on glass up to 10mm thick. Turning to the specs, which at first glance don't make very impressive reading. The light is just 9 watts, which is 6 watts less than the Kessel H80, and significantly less than the 40 watt Kessel H160 and 55 watt AI Prime Fuge. But those lights are of course also significantly more expensive, at around £250 compared to £60 for the Tunzi. And many people will run the AI and Kessel lights at less than 100%, which means the gap to the Tunzi is a little smaller than it might look on paper. And while the Tunzi can't compete on size, as we all know, it's what you do with it that counts. And the Tunzi makes the most of what it's got. With every refugium light I've had, my worry has always been that they'd rust in a humid environment that is an aquarium sump, and that the rust would break off over time and end up in my water. But the Tunzi has the unique advantage of being waterproof, which means you can have it as close to the water surface as you like without worrying about rusting. And if you've ever seen any BRS TV videos, you'll know how much par you gain by putting lights close to the water, although that will of course come at the cost of spread. But the Tunzi's party trick is that it's actually submersible so you can keep it underwater right next to your Kato, and Tunzi reckons that means you don't lose part of reflection off the water surface. But that is where the features end. There's no app functionality, no brightness control and no timer, so you'll need a good old fashioned plug timer to set your on off schedule. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, the more simple a product is, the less likely it is to go wrong. You don't really want to adjust spectrum on a refugium light anyway, and you can effectively adjust the intensity by raising or lowering the light itself. So that's all the theory, what's it actually like? Well I've had mine for about 6 months now and it's been doing a perfectly reasonable job. My Kato is a lush green colour and grows well, but to be honest I've found my growth rate has slowed down since I got this to replace my 18 watt Luxbird Fuge Light. I've had the Tunzi submerged so it was right next to my macro algae, but that wasn't enough to make up for the 50% power reduction. So about a month ago I bought a second one and my Kato is now back to growing as fast as it was before. I took the opportunity to mount them just above the water, rather than underwater, because I didn't want to have to clean algae off the lights. Although to be fair, it hadn't got that dirty over the 4 or 5 months I had it submerged, save for a patch at the far end, away from the LEDs. To give you the full picture, I have 450 watts of light above my display tank, around 27 well-fed fish, and a ton of other filtration methods. And on a tank like that, one Tunzi 8831 was never going to be enough but on a smaller tank, it's probably just about all you need. And because they're relatively compact, space for a second light isn't exactly a problem. It's worth noting that the Tunzi macroalgae reactor comes with one of these lights attached to the outside, which is part of the reason Tunzi made it this shape. The reactor is rated for tanks between 100 and 600 litres, or 25 to 150 gallons. But that factors in the size of the reactor itself, as well as the fact that the reactor spins the algae inside. So while Tunzi don't quote tank sizes for the light alone, it's probably fair to assume it'll be fit for smaller tanks than the algae reactor. And based on my experience, I'd say one will probably be okay for anything up to a Red Sea Reefer 250, which is around 250 litres or 60 gallons. For any bigger tanks, I'd say you need at least one more, and it probably wouldn't hurt to have two lights even on smaller tanks. And while I'm now getting very good growth with two lights, I still feel like a third wouldn't be overkill. Now that doesn't actually bother me, because it's still cheaper than an AI Prime Fuge or the Kessel H160, and I bought a power supply with a splitter, so I can use one plug to power both Tundi lights. In fact, it's a 4-way splitter, so I could add another 2 lights to bring the power up to 36 watts. In your tank, you might feel you need the extra juice of something like the Kessel or the AI, and there's no doubt that the cheap Amazon grow lights do a very good job, so you don't have to spend more than 20 or 30 quid to get a decent grow light. But German company Tunzi has a reputation for longevity, so I'm not expecting the 8831 to go wrong anytime soon. And while the cheap Amazon lights do grow well, there's no guarantee they'll last. My Luxbird Par 38, for example, died for no apparent reason after just six months. And the Tunzi is the only fuse light I've ever been able to find that I can say with any degree of confidence that it won't rust. So in summary, its benefits are that it's reasonably priced, waterproof, likely to be reliable, and is nice and compact. 
but the downsides are that one isn't likely to be enough, certainly for bigger tanks, it has zero functionality, and if you end up buying more than one, it starts moving away from being reasonably priced. But it still gets my stamp of approval. Having had several fuge lights over the years, I finally feel like I have one that will last me for years, so I don't mind spending a little more money, particularly when I have the peace of mind that comes from knowing it won't rust. So there you have it then, a really good light with a few unique advantages, but also a few flaws. But let me know what you think about it in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.